So I'm like a day late to this, but this Avengers versus X-Men event is so freaking cool. I talked about how much fun this would be back when they introduced that uh, like Valentine's Day event with all the power couples. But now having one themed around actual teams is so sick. Once you play four X-Men in a game, all of your X-Men have plus one power. As someone who grew up watching the 90s X-Men cartoon and who still like loses their mind every time that theme song comes on. <laughs> This is so great because in Marvel Snap, all of these iconic teams, Avengers, Fantastic Four, X-Men, their cards never had any connection. Like the Fantastic Four, the cards make no sense together. So it's great to have these events to actually unify these teams and give you an excuse to play them like thematically. And a ton of people have been adding, you know, selected calculated X-Men cards into real decks and finding success thanks to this power buff. I wanted to take it a whole nother level and just make the entire deck part of the X-Men event. And I grabbed a set of cards that looked like it fit really well together. I wasn't expecting, you know, the world or anything, because this is kind of a bounce deck without some of the key stuff. You know, we got like Wolfsbane in here instead of Hitmonkey, because Hitmonkey's not an X-Men, right? Uh, so there's some, some weird odd choices here and there, but I had a great run with this deck. I went nine and five, that's a 64% win rate. All of your cards having plus one means throughout the course of a game, you're getting like plus eight, plus nine, plus 10 extra power very often just thanks to the event, which does a ton of work. You know, that's like plus four in a couple locations, most games, which can be an enormous advantage. I, oft I also have to say, Wolfsbane felt surprisingly great in this deck. Is this something we're sleeping on? In bounce decks, like being able to play her twice was nuts. Havoc felt very, very good as well in this deck. Just one of those power spikes. Bishop is a card we don't see as much these days. Used to be a staple alongside Angela in all kinds of decks, uh, but still felt like he did work in this and just winning some games, man. It was cool. Also Cable and Mirage as two cheap kind of bounce feeders also just gave me lots of awesome game stealing sort of resources. And when Mirage is a 2-3 and Cable's a 2-4, thanks to the X-Men buff, those stats hold up pretty well. So all in all, uh, great to have so much fun with a thematic deck like this one. I'm not as in love with the Avengers side of things, but um, this deck worked well. And, you know, it doesn't have a ton of iconic characters for me from the old X-Men cartoon, but I love Cable. I love Bishop. I love Beast. I love Forge, I love Nightcrawler, and I love Iceman and Rogue, so I had enough to get the job done, right? Those are some cartoon staples. Anyway, I'm rambling a lot because I just think this is so freaking cool, but uh, got some fun games in this one. Crazy little deck that worked way better than it should, so uh, perhaps get some wins of this or enjoy it while you can because I don't know how long this event lasts, but it's a fun little bonus in the meantime. Yeah, Kitty Early is definitely a good sight to see. Just kind of free. I think we have so much spare energy in our games at the end that we're happy to see Kitty. Iceman certainly good too. Bishop and Wolfsbane are both kind of threats, so that's nice to have some threat density. Medusa, good card, but we don't see it every day. Oh, cloning Vats and Kitty Pride later. So next turn we can go Bishop Kitty and just play a bunch of kitties every turn, I think. Oh, Wolfsbane is also really good on cloning vats too. Maybe it's uh maybe we don't actually play a second bishop, huh? Maybe well, we might want to put it here just so that we have another body for the Wolfsbane next turn. But Wolfsbanes are insane. Oh, well, okay, again, that actually kind of technically makes the Wolfsbane better, I suppose. <laughs> like <laughs> there's something something here happening. Are they going to play another one right away? Because if so, they're going to get burned so hard and I will be so happy. <laughs> oh, it's war bad this time. Okay. That's also good, but it does mean maybe left is sort of free. I, I don't... I don't know. Can we afford to put a wolf spade in again is another question we have. Um, I think so. It's pretty dang big and the bishop is still scaling as well. And we need to be a little bit respectful of that green goblin potential. Now, they could put a goblin here, I guess, since they got Warpath. Nebula this time. Okay, that's actually going to scale a little because of this Wolfsbane, but... 
this feels like the safest way to contest like every spot to me just because the wolf spains are so big you know you want to play one in cloning bats every turn because now we're like contesting sort of everywhere right let's do maybe this we don't expect them to play left because of these war paths but i gotta play a card anyway right so <laughs> maybe we'll try so we can win mid and left we can actually still win right right still actually pretty challenging for them they're out of war paths um they can green goblin left but the kitty pride will cover that because it's five and negative four so it'll be a plus one she's five because it's her system he's negative four because it's her system right so it's plus one um what is this though isn't it like a galactus or something crazy dude are we getting about are we about to get galactus bro we beat galactus right so that's fine oh it's magneto oh bro bro that is a sick magneto but we actually tie anyway the warpaths get so debuffed that we tie here and win here that is the most disruptive Magneto I've ever seen. That's a 39 power disruption Magneto, man. Look at Iceman Early's chill, yeah. Uh, Mojo World is definitely good for us. We can... Not a junk deck, it says. <laughs> <coughs> well, that build is a little bit stressful. I like Cable first, I think. Although, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm not sure why that is. I have to think about why that logic is, is what it is. Um, it gives me data about their hand. They're also, you know, playing early call. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Um, excuse me. It gives me data about their deck. Mirage gives me data about their hand. Swap those up there real fast. We got an Eliath, which is potentially a very powerful play. We could just go hope here and just start cycling kitties on it. And then maybe finish with like Goliath or something if the opponent doesn't commit. But that, that keeps the Nebula in check, basically, while still benefiting from hope every turn. Okay, this this is definitely a junk deck, bro. You got Hood. <laughs> no, I don't I don't believe you, man. I think you're lying to me. Ah, uh, Nightcrawler wants to move mid, but I can't if he's in Dark Dimension. Um, I guess I guess we can just do um do this for now, right? This is fine. Doesn't matter. He'll move out and then Kitty can start next turn. Let's chill. So Mirage, I don't know, we're about to see. Sentry, okay, so they went big here already. Void. Um, I can actually play Eliath this turn to stop their Void, potentially. It's letting Nebula scale once, so they go to 17. Am I gonna be able to beat 17? actually no at the moment but i might not need to because if i can beat void and hood it's like who cares right now what if they annihil us here and this eliath is wasted well we lose that's what <laughs> we lose i think we're in trouble i don't think they're expecting this eliath though i think that's probably gonna catch them off guard a little bit ah wolf speed is sufficiently large okay let's see that's good news nice <laughs> dude it's so satisfying dude i like as someone who rarely plays a lioth unless i have to for a video it is very satisfying to beat the opponent with their own lioth especially right after a snap nova roma all right no problem cable on two or mirage on two classic question man <laughs> well currently mirage would be insane if they don't play this demon maybe we go mirage see if we can't get this demon out uh we don't have a beast right now but could build a beast lane demon 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 oh they played the demon we get Celine instead kind of wild all right let's grab the opponent's mm, wolfsbane would be very cool with a beast as well this is the sort of deck that has Annihilus, probably not a lot of ongoing cards. I wouldn't think for Rogue necessarily. Thinking more about like sentries and stuff. Hopefully this Iceman disrupts them a little bit. Havoc is hit. Now he can escape his debuff, so that's kind of chill. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're definitely kind of showing a... Uh, spot here for beast but we don't actually currently have a beast so 
Is that gonna be worth it? Is this like a sentry? It is. So I'm thinking about just pulling out four cards right, right now. I mean, we can absolutely do it. Just go hard here and then maybe go hard mid. I also kind of like maybe, maybe we leave Sort of like this a little bit better, right? This this leaves me some flexibility thanks to Kitty Pride. A little bit more surprise factor if they play an Nihilus this turn. Now, I mean, of course, if they play an Nihilus, like, they, you know, they're still destroying the Void, so this is still contested and everything. It's just I don't have to deal with the Void, right? So it's it's notably more interesting for us, I think. Um, yeah, Beast, unfortunately, not, not a good one. Uh... I mean, it's kind of an interesting line here. Like this actually is kind of free, right? Because you're removing negative three and three, but you're only getting like six power there, but Jeff's bigger mid maybe where it counts. But see a six is a tie is a problem, but then you're kind of counting on Baxter building to maybe give you an edge. But are you really gonna beat both mid and right? I mean, right, we're pretty far ahead. Rogue is only a three, though, again. You could also do Jeff here and do something like this. This just lets you play Beast is basically the the metric, right? Oh, Punish is retreating, yeah. The, 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 the void uh, hit is what really cost them. Also, just everybody's stats are just so big, dude. Like, it's... It's not much, but it adds the, the freak up due to the X-Men buffs. It's just really overwhelming when you get, you know, how much free power here? Three, seven, nine free power. Okay. Yeah. Um, Kitty. Yeah, we'll have time to play Iceman. We can always weave him in. So let's just get Kitty uh, moving, get her uh, buffed, get her, get her uh, cycling up here. Havoc, we're definitely not playing on two in this deck. Havoc, I think, is a card we want to save for later as much as possible. Turn five, you know, maybe. You know, arguably turn four sometimes, especially if you got a hope down. Can see an excuse for that, yeah. All right. Oh, speaking of hope. Oh, put it, uh, got Kitty Pride, not for me though. Um, yeah. Beast can still go here next turn. That's chill. Agent Coulson, Quinjet Cable. So definitely some kind of a uh, cool Mockingbird shield list. I got a collector though. That's nice. Good for Beast actually. Good for Mirage too. Dang. Mm, I do. Well, we can go for a turn five Beast, I guess, right? That's fine. We lose one Kitty Pride cycle. We play these on curve, but that's probably worth it um just to get bonus collector buffs here no bishop for us though so one of our like more primary scalers is gone um rogue can be a threat wolfsbane can be a threat <gasps> oh bro Wait, this is their Mockingbird. Oh, that's from Coulson. Are you kidding me? That's actually insane. Um, are you for real? Wow. They got a Coulson Mockingbird, dude. That's so good. Yeah, this is still pretty good though. I mean, honestly, we're not in a bad spot, I don't think. Would be cool if we got, I don't know, Rogue's no good. I just don't know if I have the like scaling stats to match. They're probably not expecting, well, no, they should know that I got the Mockingbird, although they may think I got like an Elsa too, because they're both three at the time, it looks like maybe, or no, this is three now. I don't know what it was in their hand. It could have been notably cheaper, right? Uh, this is six energy, so Bishop's probably not worth it. It's gotta be like this set, right? That makes Collector much bigger. Um. They're not able to get very big there. Here you do actually expect them potentially get notably larger and they're just already way ahead too is another side of it. Kitty Pride is enormous. Maybe something like this? 
a lot of stats mid here, especially collector scaling too. Well, we think we might expect 18 here. We're beating 18, 11 and six. No, not quite. Um, let's do this then. I think I like this better. This puts more stats left for that big mockingbird left, right? Oh, it's just a miles. Oh, Loki, but no collector because we stole it. Oh, why am I si oh, bro? They already played bro. They already played the second mockingbird. It's literally right there. We just <laughs> what are you looking at bro? Same difference. You know, this is a uh, same size. Don't worry about it. Same size. Yeah, nice. The uh, X-Men buff, of course, doing a little bit of work here, right? Um, opponent did not get an X-Men bump and we won by four with four X-Men. So you can see the difference literally right there. Okay, Kitty Early is awesome. Yeah, Bishop is good. Hope is good. You play. Guess you still play Hope first in theory, but Hope's really not good until turn four anyway. So no, I guess you play Bishop first, don't you? Yeah, definitely not playing Havoc yet. He can come down later. Rogue is our one like good counter in this deck. Now most people are playing like kind of real X Men decks, and by that I mean you know like kind of designed decks which we're not exactly doing i mean this is still you know designed to be good it's not like it's garbage or anything but uh it's not like a real deck you know see so like they have dr doom we have all x-men right which dr doom is an insane card to get for free by the way like, are you serious this is brutally good kitty prime scaling them up to uh, this is gonna be a tough one to win man they just got 15 power i got two <laughs> for free that's a hard one to catch up to man um i mean yeah bishop can get big but not that big dude we just don't have a lot of juice in the tank here uh wolf spain's a big card oh man i actually drew the wolf spain right on command that's kind of cool i mean havoc there is pretty nice maybe we can put in a um forge by himself i think we're probably gonna be trying to win mid so it's gonna be like whatever card i draw not oh it's gonna say plus a wolf spain but good god dude uh now the havoc at eight will technically beat the black bolt at seven. Oh, he's even bigger than eight because we have forge so he's actually gonna go to 10 or 15 with atlantis 16 with atlantis am i bad at math we're just plus two. Oh, he's an x-men he's an x-men i got x-men buffs bro i forgot about the x-men buffs um no nah, i think it's this right because it's like sucks because i'm only getting eight power added here but i gotta trust the havoc maybe because it's gonna be hard for them to add a ton of power they can of course you know they, they're only losing five by adding a card so if they add an eight power card next to black bolt or something right uh then they're in a decent spot for sure gladiator dang shadow king wow wait shadow king oh no not like this Shadow King doesn't do enough, but Gladiator does. No, dude. Imagine getting 15. Oh, also, we lost, we lost each by one. No, if they put either card here, we'd put our card here. Oh, my God. The Shadow King just still lost. Oh, random car. Loki with random cards is insane. Uh, the only the only question I have to ask is like, do we Galactus them instead? <laughs> no, <laughs> we definitely play Mirage into Loki stuff. That's insane with random cards. Really, really good. Hand is so full for Loki. I never really play Loki, so this is going to be a nice little way to get some Loki action without feeling, you know, guilt free Loki, basically. <laughs> Pixie. Huh. Oh, Chavez is a really good card at 1-4. Do we like Chavez here better than Bishop? Pixie also makes me think they might have some big cards. But this is like my last chance because of the Loki. Although the plus two is also not going to be very good because Loki's going to delete whatever it turns into. But even like Chavez Nightcrawler 6 is more bigger than that on average. Maybe. 
Orcus Forge doesn't matter because we're going to draw to seven anyway for the Loki next turn. I think we try to high roll the morph, man. Pixie decks have big cards sometimes, right? It's going to be bigger than Bishop on average. Even deleting a couple cards, I think that remains true. So we know they have a destroyer in hand. That's got to be a random thing from Triskelion, though, so. It indeed. Indeed is. Oh, another destroy card. Wow, kind of fun. So this is Loki 100%. Do we want a top deck or do we want a... Do we want a, a Sentinel? Probably just want a top deck. I think a... Oh, what? Oh, I, I clicked the wrong card! Oh no! My baby's... I don't know if you guys can hear. My baby woke up and is screaming and I clicked the wrong freaking card. It's maybe not a problem though, right? Maybe we're actually okay about it. Because we can play Loki this turn anyway, and Warpath is still insane. I blame you, Regina. It's your fault. <laughs> I need to go tend to her. <laughs> Let's finish this game and tend to Regina. You woke up an hour earlier than normal. Quizzical indeed. Shang-Chi seems potentially good, but at the same time, there's nothing to hit. Um, with Warpath, we do want to be a bit careful, I guess. So I guess we just play the big cable and maybe Mojo and I guess Nightcrawler is bigger than Lizard usually, right? Shang-Chi's in their deck though, you know. So, I mean, they can't use it mid, but they can definitely use it left. Can I win if they play a Shang-Chi here? They have eight, 11, I'd have four, nine, this would still be inactive. 11 for a tie. Mojo here is really big. Maybe I turn off the Warpath because Mojo's big enough. Okay, I lose five, but I gain eight. This maybe that maybe loses to a um a blue marvel is the only thing, but I'm hedging against the Shang-Chi that we know is in their deck at least. Um, do I have any like weird Avengers lines or anything happening? Shark Cheese and Avenger. Do they have any weird Avengers lines? I don't know. I could throw off the math a little bit because I'm not really counting too hard on that. Uh. Well, I don't think we're gonna win right. So if they do have the Shark G left, we we might be playing for a tiebreaker. If we did the math right. Oh wait, I didn't account for the X Men buff, bro. Yeah. I did, the X-Men are so good. Dude, I didn't account for the X-Men above my own. My own X-Men buff landed. That's crazy way to win, dude. I gotta go tend to the baby. I gotta tend to Regina. Yeah, Kitty Pride's awesome. I do like playing a Mirage early. I also like Iceman pretty early as well, but Mirage in particular could give me some pretty cool Asgard lines, so. Oh, White Pal is gonna give me something big I don't normally have access to. Opponent got a mo dude, I don't even think about this. The opponent got a mirage off of white palace. <laughs> that is crazy. Now let's get another kitty cycle in. Um, I don't think we're ever playing this infinite, so I need like Sakar or something to pop up and just like pull the infinite into play. Because I just don't see that happening. Now, Cable can hit a pixie card. Moyer Falls is pretty bad for us. Yeah, Cable could hit a big discounted pixie card, dude. Let's go. Come on. Hit me up, dude. Come on. Mm, well, it's... It is discounted, as you requested, sir. <laughs> sir, we've acquired the discounted card for you. I see if this Infinite was a She-Hulk, we could maybe do something cool. I gotta play Mirage next turn or it's just dead to me. Um, gonna have a lot of cards in hand. I'm actually gonna be kind of full. I don't know how much upside there is in denying the opponent, but there's probably at least a little. Beast? Oh, Kitty Pride can't go back. I'm actually full. Oh, crap. Well, that's fine. I don't know if I was actually gonna beast here anyway, so it may not actually matter too much. I don't think Beast has a ton of upside. It's just sort of clunky though, man. Five energy next turn. I have a Mirage card, a Kitty Pride, and a Wolf's Bane. 
It sort of depends on the size and the Raj card. Now we think the opponent might skip for an Infinite. We might see a Magic. I don't know. This Havoc's kind of risky in some ways. Oh, we got a Wasp. I mean, I'll, I'll take it actually. That's not that's not so bad, man. Sort of free, right? Sort of free. He says. I mean, this doesn't even really beat Cyclops. They didn't skip, so they're just gonna play like slam like a big Hulk, you know? Uh, they don't have any energy cheat. Well, I mean, with Pixie, we don't actually know what they're gonna slam, I guess. Could be darn near anything. <sighs> this kind of feels like overkill mid a little bit, because if they're gonna win. Like mid, we're actually pretty strong. Maybe Wolfsbane's better than Wasp to contest left a little better. I, I don't know. This seems shaky at best. Oh, they just don't have it. Nice. Just spammed him out, dude. Their pixie must have missed pretty hard. Okay. Yeah, Kitty Early is nice. Savage Land, we could beast that. Um, it'd be kind of cool for Bishop to replay all the cheap stuff. Uh, we don't have Hitmonkey this list, of course, because he's not a freaking X Man. Yeah, I like, I like Nightcrawler because we can move him. I mean, of course, we're super exposed to Killmonger, you know, either way, really. But, yeah, I mean, the deck only has three one-drops. Not that exposed. Let's not over oversell it. But anyway, the, the, the flexibility on Nightcrawler is pretty chill. Ah, it's a good spot for him, too, maybe, yeah. Pixie deck, I mean, who knows? I, I don't know what to expect here. Really hard to guess what they might have. Pixie's not meta enough that there are expectations really set. Seen some kind of tempo we Thor lists though. Thor and Jane and uh, what's his idiot, you know. Definitely something that's popped up. Bum, 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 bum. I kind of like Wolfsbane into Beast, right? It's cool. Just lets us... Um, I kind of need to draw one of these three cards that we're going to do that because I don't really have anything else to play... This also means like vault to me is like super exposed because I'm not I'm not contesting vault at all if I do this. I mean, I guess I could put a havoc in there. Maybe we put a havoc in there. I don't know. X Men buff coming in. Ooh, Bishop is actually pretty cool there, but it throws the Kitty Pride out of the window. Bishop's only gonna be what three plus I think Bishop's just smaller than Havoc to be honest, right? So this is two one is three and zero is three so Next turn I can play Stuff I, I... Thor you think is going to at least ten man. This is uh yeah, I don't know about this, dude. I don't think we're winning right. Yeah, see, the Havoc's kind of wasted there. I wonder if Havoc should go left here and you just give up right. I mean, we can move the Nightcrawler, but I'm... I'm, I'm going to have trouble winning left, too, because Beta Ray Bill is just a monster. I mean, I guess Kitty Pride Wolfsbane is the play left. That's a lot of power. Beta Ray Bill goes... It's one of those where it's like, do you think the opponent even contests mid at all? Like, do I need to put Forge in on the kitty kind of thing, right? And trust, what, nine and seven? Oh, that's a lot. Yeah, no, this is actually pretty good. This is pretty good. I'd be nervous if they had, like, a double on the double double on this, right? If they had, like, Odin and a thing. Otherwise, though, this is pretty dang big. They're snapping, so they might feel pretty confident. I don't know. Let's see. How big can we get? I mean, we're getting really big. But, you know, like I said, if they have Odin Hammer, we might be in trouble. Oh, God, that's just a lot of cards. Magneto. Oh, I did not expect that. Now, we're definitely going to beat Magneto, but now I'm nervous mid. They played so much stuff. Is it mostly just hammers, though, right? I guess it's mostly... Are we actually going to beat this? I don't know. Is that an Odin? Oh, it's Hitmonkey. Oh, God. No, we beat 16, don't we? No, maybe not. No, I think we're at 16 exactly. No way, we're short left. No. No. 
No, so close! Magneto was big enough! Dude, that is a monster final turn, by the way. Hit Monkey, Magneto, two hammers, and a bishop. That pixie absolutely ate. A kitty early? I mean, uh, yeah, Aunt May's kitty's chill with me. She's popping back to hand, so she's usually fairly safe. Oh, snap from the opponent, okay. Uh, consider me officially spooked. Oh, mine's on one's a good reason to snap in a Thanos deck. Poof, card's gone. Top 3,000 player, man. I'm like 15k right now. I don't usually queue that high. It's wild. Uh, da, 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 yeah. Let's do this. Um, Beast with Forge is good. Wolfsbane's also pretty solid as well. Okay, Soulstone Mid's gonna make us weak unless we find a rogue. Man, everybody's putting their Power Stones right next to their Soul Stones today. Which is a good hedge, I guess, against Rogue. I don't think that's why they're doing it, though. It feels it feels more haphazard than that, which... I don't know. That's fine, I guess. It just feels haphazard. So... Yeah, I think we're going to build a Wolfsbane here next turn with Kitty Pride Nightcrawler. And then try to beast that wolf spain i just don't have a ton of oh nothing here is good literally nothing <laughs> i mean i guess mirage cable and Iceman had upsides at least that's something perhaps this is when i need a shuri and a taskmaster by the way yeah so kitty will pull out we can beast the remainder uh we don't really need to beast the kitty of course that's fine so mid's still scary unless we get a rogue, in which case it's kind of 50-50 scary still, to be honest. Still a little spooky. Uh, this Wolfsbane should trigger the X-Men buff too, right? So this will make us bigger. Going mid, all right. Havoc is a great card to potentially contest right, to be honest. Am I only gonna get rocks from here on out? Ooh, a real card unheard of so this is two one and zero so it's three four i wouldn't be able to play a three drop if i got it but i could always like drop a forge oh, i also have kitty pride too to consider as well though so really i need kind of a two drop mid feels sort of gone anyway to be honest oh my goodness all the cards okay is mid just like too far gone, right? I mean, it's maybe not, to be honest. Oh, kitty stuck. Shoot, the Maximus, bro. What a baller play, dude. The Maximus screws me. I mean, hear me out. Is this good enough? Oh, they don't have it. Nice. I don't think the Wolfsbane there is probably overkill, right? Maybe the Wolfsbane. Because, like, what's their max output? Maybe 10 usually? Oh, the Maximus, he, they're unhappy. But the Maximus, I mean, it kind of helped. Maybe they needed priority for Eliath, though, and the Kitty Pride sticking cost them priority or something? 